Welcome to the Landscape Photography Vlogcast. Join me, Mr. Ferto Ninja, and Mr. Paul Thompson Photography from YouTube. Every Sunday morning at 10am for everything photography related. And also look out for some special guests. Grab yourself a brew, beer, or something stronger, and let's get into this week's vlogcast. All right, so welcome to the podcast, and this week we've got uh, Michael and Chris Barrera. I am pronouncing that last name right, and I yes. apologise if I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, it's good to have you on, and um, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you live and um, the, the style of photography that you sort of shoot on, on your so, doorstep? My name is Mike Barrera, and I am uh, raised here in Arizona, U.S. Southwest, a uh, landscape photographer, and um, myself and my wife here run a uh, YouTube channel. We do workshops, tutorials, things like that. And um, yeah, I've been doing it for, I don't even know now, five years ish, something like that. Kind of got into it late. I'm, uh, I think it was 35 when I, when I started. So it was a bit, bit of a late start. And um, when I first, you know, bought my first camera, I was, I didn't even know what it, what it meant to buy a better camera. I knew I wanted a better camera to take pictures and I had no idea what that meant. So I uh, started Googling what is a DSLR and Bought a Nikon D3300. Yeah, that was, oh, Nikon, that was my man. first one, I think. Yeah, a Nikon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my name uh, is Chris Perea, and I'm originally from Switzerland. I grew up there, and uh, I met Mike a little over two years ago now, and we just got married last November, and I moved here in October. And then for photography, um, I think I started out on film, like years and years ago and then one of my first digital cameras was a Nikon too I think something like a 7200 something and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah also I always had photography as a hobby and I would say probably about five years ago I started to do wedding photography and oh, wow. uh, two years ago or three years ago I wanted to get more into landscapes it was always a hobby for me and um, yeah so that's when I started to do more landscape photography. Cool. Yeah, cool. Which I came in. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. But, um. <laughs> yeah, I'm shooting Kenning now for about eight years, I would say. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're fully integrated then, obviously. You're, uh, you've gone to the other side. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm heavily invested in Kenning. <laughs> <laughs> Her, uh, her, the camera she uses weighs as much as the car battery, I think. <laughs> the 1PX Mark II for landscape, so it's pretty impressive. She carries that thing around. Wow. <laughs> right. Well, you're all right if you're in the middle of nowhere and you need some uh, backup, you just hit them with that. <laughs> yeah, you need, yeah, there's no guns needed. <laughs> so how did the YouTube channel, how did you, was it like a joint idea? Was, you know, how did you sort of come up with the idea of it? I started, uh, I started the channel originally, um, I'd say probably a little over two years ago, and it was mainly just, I don't honestly didn't know, I had a GoPro, and I was just, I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. I was just kind of filming what I was doing, and uh, kind of fumbling along for a couple of years until I uh, started really taking it, in, you know, seriously as far as trying to tell a story and doing things like that, so... Mostly it was just documenting my trips, documenting my hikes and my outings and things like that. So yeah, about two and a half years ago. And then when Chris would come out, she'd come out to visit me when we were just dating and we'd, I'd have her on the channel and stuff. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, when she came here full time, when she moved here in October, then we kind of made it a, a our channel type thing and went from there. So it's such a good idea, isn't it? You know? Yeah. There's not many, there's not many couples, is there doing this sort of thing? No, not not that I can see. As far as landscape photographers that are actually out in the field shooting, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, no. maybe one or two smaller channels, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm friends with um, Sam and Hannah Bowes. They're from the UK, and oh, uh, they're, yeah, they're quite some. Yeah, they're quite small, sort of some my sort of size, and um, yeah, they're, they're they're a real nice couple. But yeah, they're, they're, apart from them, I don't know of anyone else who does it really. But yeah, it's such a good idea. It's yeah. It was nice. We we met uh, originally. We had both signed up to go to Patagonia with uh, Thomas Heaton and Brendan Vanson. She went the very first trip, and then uh, I, I I was watching it, and I'm like everybody else. I'm like I gotta do that next year. <laughs> so, uh, 
I signed up for the second year, you know, which was last April 2019. And uh, we started chatting, you know, through that. And eventually she came out here to, to visit, you know, we had chatted for a while and stuff. And then just all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to fall out on one of your trips, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that's a long trip. If you do fall out, I would say, yeah. <laughs> Especially when she's got a 1DX to hit you with. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, where, so where do you normally pick, uh, where's your go-to sort of spot or area, I suppose, because it's, it's hard for us from the UK to really get grips of the scale. Yeah, you know what I mean like, like when we go to I don't know like when I used to live in the south in Cornwall it was like I don't know this big <laughs> <laughs> and and then Scotland was like this big but you know you are you know uh, it's... yeah tell me about it I'm yeah. where do you Switzerland. where do you go <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's like so where do... small pretty small country with a lot of population and uh, a lot of mountains with restaurants on top um, so you have yes. houses everywhere. You don't have an area where there's no houses or no civilization. Mm -hmm. So when I got out here, I was um, pretty blown away. You know that you just can go drive for miles and miles and not see a single soul and yeah. not see a house or anything at all. And yeah. um, I would say, as far as where we're going out to shoot, right now we are trying to avoid Arizona because it's too hot. It's oh. it's a uh, it's Miserable. blazing out there right now. It's like 43 degrees. I don't know oh. what that's in Fahrenheit. It's, uh, I know Too we hot. always have this thing like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fahrenheit and stuff is still one of those things we can't even figure out. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, right now today, it was around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So, and that's 40, what is 43. it, 40? Yeah. We get our measure, we're, it's a constant argument with measurements. <laughs> We just, we just decided that's it we're just how many bananas long is it and we just count bananas. <laughs> is that five bananas okay five bananas that's perfect we got that and and inches and feet and meters and yeah. i don't think body parts to measure things it's not my thing i don't know <laughs> so you're doing well if you get five bananas five yeah. bananas is, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then you get the American bananas, which are like this big. Like, is it American bananas? Oh, like, here we <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. Our, our daily struggle. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, compared, to, like I said, the U.S. Um, so you can drive from the state that we live in. You can drive from the south part of the state to the north part of the state in about. I'd say eight hours and that's just Arizona, you know, that's not even like mm. California, Utah, all these other places. Like it's, you can drive, you know, we drove 10 hours and we were barely at the Southern part of Utah. So just North of the Arizona border, you know, yeah. four hours of driving. So in Switzerland, if you drive from her hometown of Basel to Venice, Italy, it's like six hours. You're going across like three countries, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, you could definitely drive, from John O'Groats to Land's End in what twelve hours? Yeah. If you if you didn't have no traffic, like, that's like you know obviously the entire length of the UK. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. I hear people are like, "Oh, it's a three hour drive." I'm like, "That's nothing. We did yeah. ten hours is fine." <laughs> yeah, this is the thing we have no uh, no concept of it here because you think two hours <laughs> that's miles away. I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 Ten bananas. <laughs> yeah, ten yeah. bananas, yeah. Ten bananas, yeah. Ten bananas. <laughs> so your class in yeah. a banana was like an hour's drive. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Right. <laughs> scale it when we're dealing with dragon time. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So I always I always find like um like when we go out and shoot here, like even when, say say you do go out into Scotland and or the Lake District and you know, there's there's nothing that's gonna eat you. There's nothing that's gonna sting you. You know, you might you might run out of fuel and have to skip in your van for a night. Someone's gonna find you. What's you're it right. What's it like having? I suppose you you're used to it, but what's it like having that sort of? Is it intimidating knowing that you know you, you, it could be quite dangerous? <laughs> well, I guess um, you have to get used to the cactus. Um, that's like the biggest thing because. You know, in, in Europe, most of the places, you can just walk and, you know, have your eyes to the horizon and enjoy 
enjoy the scenery. And you cannot do that here. You constantly have to look down. You have to watch where you're placing your feet so you're not you know, brushing by a cactus and they just, they just jump you. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, and then they look evil. right now it's also, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right now it's also the rattlesnake season. So you got to yeah. be careful with that. Mm -hmm. um, myself, I haven't seen one yet. Um, but when we were out there to shoot, I think it was in November or December. Um, that's the season for the tarantulas. So they were everywhere and I love the big spiders. I think yeah. they're very interesting. I mean, I don't want them crawling on me, but I think they're very <laughs> interesting creatures. <laughs> but it was, yeah. you know, cool to see that because that was just something that I never saw before. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it can get pretty wild here with the, especially in summertime. So you have the the tarantulas, the rattlesnakes, and then you got the cactus. But then in July we have the monsoon season, which is these giant electrical storms and thunderstorms and mm. huge those we call them haboos, but those big dust storms you see. Mm -hmm. uh, we get those a lot in, in the summertime for about a month and a half. Um, and then if you want to do something like Milky Way, then you got like mountain lions to, to worry about and bears there are up lines north. Here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I actually have a, a funny story. Um, about a year and a half, so April, two years ago, I was out shooting Milky Way with a friend of mine. And uh, we're out shooting, we're out in the desert. You know, it's, it's dark. It was about a three mile hike into the, the back country. And um, we hear the sound every once in a while. We couldn't figure out what it was. You know, it, just, it sounded like a, um, almost like a baby deer. It seemed like just a really high pitch, just like a, like a squeak almost. And um, it's completely dark, so we couldn't tell what it was. And it, it sounded like it was getting further away, and then it was close. And then it was further away, and then it was close. And um, I, I couldn't, we just couldn't figure it out. About every minute or so, it would, it would start making noise. So finally, after about, I'd say, 20 minutes of this, I go walk over the rock where we're at. We're on a giant, giant rock. And um, I hear it again. And I, at that moment, I knew right away what it was. It was a mountain lion cub. We were standing on the den, and it was going inside and out. And it was making noises. And that's what we were hearing. And right there, I go, I tell my buddy, I go, we got to get the crap out of here. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now. You know, because I don't know where mom's at or she's around, maybe out hunting or something. Because so, I know there's mountain lions in the area. It's a pretty, pretty dense place. Uh, relatively speaking, when it comes to mountain lions. So we just like got our tripods. We had them in our hands on the way out. We, 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 I never hiked three miles so fast in my life. No, no, because especially if it's, if it's a mother with a cub, that's even worse, yeah, that's, isn't it? And that's the thing, too, is, you know, mountain lions is something we grew up with. So they're there. We don't really want too much. But that's it. I want no part whatsoever. Freezer. Yeah, it froze. It froze a little yeah. bit. All right. Yeah, we have a we have we've been having days, so America. America, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's right in. Oh, you're back again, kind of. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Put some music on, you can do robotics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that that story makes my story look sound lame. The other, yeah, we gotta hear it. The other week I was in the woods and uh, it, and we got loads of deer out at the moment because we've had the um, because of the cover because of COVID thing, all mm. the wildlife sort of sort of crept, oh, and yeah. um, a bit closer and uh, and there's this woods and you get the red deer, mm -hmm. and uh, I it was really dark and I was on the way home. I probably left it a little bit late, and um, to get back. And, and you're walking around on gravel, gravel sort of fire roads where it's clear, and then you just got the pitch black either side. Mm -hmm. And I was in my flip flops and, my, <laughs> and I, had my, I had my I had my tripod on my on my uh, on, on my shoulder as well, I just could, mainly because I couldn't bother to put it back on my bag. And uh, and you could hear the deer like jumping in uh, the darkness, and it was all rusty because of the, the the old leaves are on the ground. And I, even then, I was a bit like, <laughs> <laughs> there was no mountain lions or nothing like that. So my story is pretty lame, if I'm honest. No, I, mean, I, I don't care how tough you are. You hear noises in the dark of things moving. It's not a good feeling at all. No, yeah, no yeah. not at all. Fear <laughs> of the unknown, I think. That's what it is. Yeah. At least we don't have grizzly bears. Now. That's a good thing. So. Yeah, that oh, was yeah, a thing in Canada. That was when I visited Canada, uh, man. 
Oh, you won't see a bear. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. You won't see a bear. <laughs> so you're constantly looking through it and then <laughs> looking behind you. Yeah, not good. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because we never, obviously never, never had to sort of even think about it. You know, no, like, you don't have anything. Even as, um, as far as like when I, you get up at like four in the morning and you, you're sneaking around the house, you get out. You, I don't check my shoes. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't check in. Sometimes I walk out the front door with no shoes on <laughs> and I don't put my shoes on. I don't put my shoes on until I get to where I'm going. It's just, yeah, you just have to think about it. So, yeah. yeah I mean, when you're camping out here, you have scorpions too and you got to, they like to hide in the cool, dark places. So you got to empty out your shoes out of the tent. If you're, you know, you don't keep the shoes out of the tent anyway, but if you do, you got to shake them out before you put them on so make sure the scorpions don't get in there. So I have, a lot of people that have been stung by scorpions. I haven't, but you know, it doesn't sound very pleasant. So. No, it doesn't sound pleasant at all. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not. I don't dig so, anything with two pincery things at the front. Oh no, thanks. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd take all the fun out of it for me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not good at all. No, no. So, <laughs> so what was your partic- What was your go-to? sort of style what is your style do you like to shoot wide do you like to shoot long like are you a 16 to 35 or are you a 24 to 70 what are you what's your sort of setup for me that changed quite a bit when i moved here because before that i was more of a 24 to 70 or even 70 to 200 in the mountains and Mm. now here everything is wide angle so out here i think the most used lens is my 16 to 35 I, I use that all the time. Um, yeah, I think it just depends. I mean, here you don't have a lot of woodlands in the area. It's more rocks and very interesting patterns on the rocks and, mm. um, you know, color on the rocks. So that's usually, yeah, what I'm gravitating, what I'm gravitating towards. What about you? Yeah, I'm going to follow that I, I'm wide angle for the most part. I mean, I, I love shooting everything, but with the desert, it's, it's a lot of big, uh, big open valleys and like epic, those epic landscapes and, and colorful sunsets and things like that. So I, I tend to be more towards the wide angle. Like I probably use my, my 14 to 24 more than anything else. I think. And I like that style of having something really close in the foreground and then focus stacking, you know, shooting in the sun. Yeah. So it's kind of complex type you know, really in your face with that backlight and all that kind of stuff. Like I, I tend to like those types of photos, um, you know, with that wide angle distortion in the foreground mm. and, and stuff like that. So I end up using that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. To, so you, you like, you like, uh, gives you this sort of license to be a bit more creative, I think, doesn't it? With a, some yeah, can do with, with a wide angle lens. Yeah. And it's, uh, you got to be careful too. I mean, there's downsides to it. They, with those wide angle lenses, I mean, you guys know you, you end up incorporating a lot and you got to mm. pay attention to the edges and seeing what's creeping into your photo. And, and, uh, it's, it's a lot of little micro adjustments here and there to kind of get that, that, you know, look you want without including everything in the photo. So it's, uh, it can be tough. Yeah. Yeah. It can be, yeah. Yes. But yes. Yeah, um, I suppose it's, 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 it's the look you're going for and there's always a downside or a trade off, isn't there? Right. Yeah. Right. Did any of you ever shoot in the desert? No, no, never. No, no. There's nothing like that over here. Mm-hmm. Not, no. no yeah, no, you struggle I mean, to find wide expanses at all, really. I mean, it, obviously, you've got the Lake District and places like that, but it's not like you, you've you got your standard wide-angle shots, but there's not like massive vistas, really. Not like right. huge expanses of land, anyway. Right, yeah. So, yeah. so do you... Yeah, so do, do you where, where, where have you traveled to? Have you got any plans or places that you want to go back to? Or Yeah, so right now, because of uh, everything that's going on, we just stick to the U.S. Southwest, uh, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and, and California, too. Um, before the shutdown, though, we were kind of traveling everywhere. When she was living in Switzerland, we were meeting all over the place. Hmm. Um, yeah, Italy, we were meeting down, we met down in Patagonia for the workshop down in Argentina and Chile, yeah. so Iceland, Iceland's another one, that's one of our favorites for sure. Yeah. Talking about the Patagonia, how did you get on, that was with the Thomas Heaton workshop you said, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, <laughs> Thomas Heaton, yeah. we went somewhere out there for like 10 days during fall colors and 
that place is uh it's it's hard to put into words <laughs> yeah it looks yeah. stunning it looks stunning from what with the fall color especially oh, yeah. yeah it does it's just it's a very inspiring place there i don't know if any of you ever been to iceland but i nope. also have that feeling in iceland it's you know wherever you look you see something that you want to photograph and uh, the hard part is just the weather. So battling with that wind, that is yeah. that is really crazy. It's uh, it's like you're not like you're you know when you're by the sea where you have that constant wind. It's just it can be still, and then out of nowhere there's just a gust, <laughs> and I don't know. You lose your hat, you lose everything. Your Try tripod goes <laughs> Cameras go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good thing when you have a one DX because it won't break. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the bad thing is it knocks out the photographer standing next to you, though. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, less competition. <laughs> That's one way to do it. You know, a funny thing, actually, uh, Glencoe reminds me a lot of Iceland. A lot of places in Scotland actually remind me of Iceland. We went to Glencoe a couple of years ago, and uh, funny thing is I actually kicked Brendan Vanson's, um, his brand new EOS. Was the RP or the R? I think it was the EOS R. He'd just gotten it. He, I mean, he had literally just gotten it. We met him up in Glencoe, and we were at the, uh, we call it the Buckle? Yeah, the Buckle. Mm, Buckle. Yeah. Buckle. Yeah. So yeah. we were at the waterfall there, and I was walking by, and I just kicked his EOS R right into the, the there's a, like a little tiny little <laughs> side creek that kind of comes yeah, in yeah. when you're looking at the waterfall. And it went in there. It didn't go fully submerged or anything like that. So he picked it up, and everything was fine. He's like, oh, it's a cannon. It's fine. And we were <laughs> going back and forth on that. And then – Two days later, we were at the ferry pools, and I dropped my Nikon Z6 into the into the river, fully submerged for like 10 seconds. I jumped down to get it. As soon as I reached down, I saw my LCD just go black. And, I was like, oh. and of course, and you hear the Canon versus Nikon. Oh, my Canon made it through all that, no problem. Uh. <laughs> A little different, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you were due to you were due to come over this year as well, weren't you? Coming over to Scotland. Yeah, yeah, we had spoke to you. We wanted to come and see the yeah. Lake District. You can do a little road trip, but uh, of course, everything now. Is yeah, just... it's not looking great, is it? <laughs> it's yeah. not looking great at the minute. Yeah, well, one thing we are looking maybe to do is a uh, place I've never been is Yellowstone up in uh, Wyoming? Wyoming. Yes, Wyoming. Yeah, and maybe in uh, August, September. Yeah, that place always yeah. appeals to me. Looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like, you know, there's so much variety also with wildlife and everything. Mm -hmm. So I've been there twice, but never for photography. It was always just, you know, for travel and enjoying the scenery. So I think it could be a place for us this summer or yeah. fall. Yeah. Staying in the U.S., I think, is uh, the only option right now. So just trying to explore the places we haven't been, national parks and things like that, I think is... Uh, Oh, we got on the list right now. So, the, are the national parks open? Will they ever shut or? They are starting to open, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were shut for the whole time. They Even, were shut the whole time. You know, like the Grand Canyon with, I would say, probably millions of visitors every year. Mm -hmm. It was shut down. And uh, some of the, um, like the little parks, uh, they're starting to open up again. They uh, they opened for the Memorial Weekend, which was um, two weeks ago, one week ago. Yeah, last holiday. Yeah. So yeah, they they just starting to open now, and uh, yeah, but there's also you know less tourists. I mean, um, these places are also visited a lot by international tourists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess they all they don't you know have to be open all the time or I don't know because they don't have as many visitors right now as they usually do. When everything is normal. Yeah, we've, yeah. All, we've all been shut down really here. I mean, the lakes, oh, were, yeah. lakes yeah, were shut down for starting. a while. Really yeah, they're nice. open See, now, though. Yeah, we, yeah, we've sort of. It's, it's, the lakes are still they're open now, aren't they, Paul? Yeah, they're open now. They've uh, they've let they're letting people back in, but it was shut for long enough. They were telling people not to come. Mm. So it's, um, but it's it's opening back up, and of course the same things happening as was happening with you. Everybody's coming at once. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, everything's everybody's piling in at once, and the place was rammed over the weekend. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, same same here. Uh, so we had a a workshop planned in August for the north rim of the Grand Canyon, which was going to be during that monsoon season. We we're going to see you know storms over the Grand Canyon, and uh, they just started opening up, but they. Uh, 
they have seasonal workers because the North Rim is only open during the summertime. They close, I think, around October, November. They open up from May to November, I believe. And uh, we were going to run a workshop there. But now, because of the, the COVID, they had to separate all their seasonal employees and put them in rooms by themselves instead of bunking them together. So the rooms that we had booked were those, were those rooms that they had to now kick everybody out and put their seasonal workers there. We had to find some good news. We ended up having to actually cancel that workshop. This all was kind of a- yeah, not great, eh? It's yeah, not but great. A lot of the- I think even uh, from and I think Thomas Heaton and Brendan's uh, Antarctica trip even got postponed too in November. So I think a lot of I think pretty much everybody, yeah, every everybody's kind of postponing most of their, if not all, their workshops right now. It's uh, a workshop, uh, and I think photography in general is is uh, it's hurting right now pretty bad. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my next question. Really is. Do you do you do do you run workshops uh, joint together or as individual or together? Yeah, together. Uh, we have we well we still have one available. Well, not available. We're running one still in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's on public land, so we don't have any restrictions or anything like that. And all the participants, we had to move it back a month, and they're all okay with it. So as far as that goes, we still have the one workshop. Um, but other than that, yeah, we we're. We're not even planning anything right now. Just we're waiting to see what happens because, I mean, who yeah. knows what's going on? Yeah. So. You just got no idea when things are going to start moving again, have we, really? That's the problem. No. No, well, I've... Pr- I know international flights here are going to be put on to uh, two-week quarantines, aren't they? International flights coming in. Mm-hmm. So it's mm. crazy. I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to put everyone off, off I think. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, if you think about that, I mean, it's that's two weeks. You just have to be in quarantine and then probably coming back. Now that, so you're talking about a month off of work just for quarantine, not yeah. alone, whatever you want to spend. You know, it's just. Yeah. Yeah, it's not crazy. Good. It's going to be hard. You know, like I've had to I've had to cancel four workshops now. Well, postpone them. Um, and so a lot of people wanted their deposits back and things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and but when we go back, when we are eventually allowed to sort of creep into doing workshops, it's going to be hard to. I think it's hard, going to be a bit harder sell, would not it? To yes. get to get people to be okay with with the concept of it, especially like I don't know about your workshops, but lots of the one to ones I do are generally with um, more, more mature people, shall we say, older people. Right, right. Uh, you know, and they got lots more time and money to spend on workshops and, and they're probably not going to be as keen are they right right yeah uh, there's there's a there's a lot of things to think about really i mean you talk about the the, the travel part of it is definitely a big part of it but also uh, logistics with you know riding in cars together and, and all this other stuff too it's just you know if you mm-hmm. have multiple people in the workshop that figuring out how everybody's going to get around and then you got, you know, waivers and things like that maybe to sign now. It's just, uh, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a good few years, I think, before yeah. you even really sort of start to do things without thinking about it. Maybe it might even be longer than that. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you are you both full-time professional photographers or do you... Yeah, I'm full time. Um, whatever that means, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> also mean I don't have a job. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, you haven't got a real day. job. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm, I'm still having fun with the photography job. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm doing all the editing and analytics and everything for YouTube now, so that keeps me quite busy. So mm. I would say right now probably 80% is uh, everything that has to do with the YouTube channel, like on the back end, what I do. And then, um, you know, some um, print sales here and there. And uh, yeah, I just got my work permit here. So I'm not sure if I want to do the wedding photography here or not. I haven't decided that yet. Um, I always enjoy wedding photography, even though other people, you know, like a controversy with 
with working with people if you're a uh, landscape photographer usually yeah. you don't like people <laughs> yeah definitely not not wouldn't be my choice <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I just, no, yeah, sounds sounds like a nightmare to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's not. Uh, it wouldn't... It's it's a terrible lot of work. That's yeah. it's like that one day usually, and uh, it's the only chance you have. So if your gear fails or you yeah. know, anything happens, if you forget a memory card. You're um, you're more or less lost, you know. So, Monumental yeah. stress is what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's not get started with Premiere Pro either. I don't even want to. I hate Premiere Pro. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's constant issues. It's constant issues. And then, you know, audio, you guys know audio and things like that. It's, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. people don't see it all, all, all the back end. Your life is, to, is to get your wife to learn how to edit. <laughs> yeah, it sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> sounds amazing. Just to say, oh, there's the files. Bye bye now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're lucky. You're lucky, mine though, though, Mike. Um, my partner used to go out quite a bit, and uh, and most most of the time she's pretty good. But uh, sometimes you sort of you look over and she's sort of like looking, <laughs> and you're like, and you're like are, we, are you done yet? Or <laughs> <laughs> we go out some three hours now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because <laughs> it's always that that classic thing where like once a week she uh, or one night a week i do my editing generally to stupid o'clock and then once a week i generally go out try and do one at least one video so i've i'm a week behind a week ahead then if you know what i mean right. and i always say yeah I'll, I'll be back by i don't know i'll be back before we get start and then mm. it's sort of quarter past 10 and i've been out like three hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you end up having to drive really quick to try and make up the time you've been in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. So how how do you go about filming? How would it go about filming your videos? Do you have like a routine? Do you? What's the sort of setup? Honestly, a lot of what we do is just kind of wing it. You know, we just sometimes if we know a location and a, a type of video, if we want to do maybe a little more travel. Or if we're doing a tutorial, usually we don't decide that until we're out in the field. And if there's something that we're like, okay, we can make this a tutorial, then try mm -hmm. it. But it's, I mean, you guys know, you never know what you're going to run into out in the field. So we try and, and film as much as possible. Uh, if we have maybe a couple of ideas, maybe we'll film a couple of, you know, pieces of the camera with different ideas. That way later on, if we end up going with one, we can use those clips. And yeah. if we do something else, and we, you know, we, we try, but... If I'm honest, most of the time it's just we we wing it. We just fly by night is what we do, you know, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Man after yeah. my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do any of this planning stuff. <laughs> Been through this before, haven't we, Tom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do planning. Right. Turn up and right. see what happens. Right. Yeah. That's, that's probably why I get so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trouble, though. When you have limited time, it does put pressure on, doesn't it? Too? Yeah, definitely. You think, oh, yeah. I've got, I got three hours. I have to get an image, a video, um, and then when I get back, I got one night to edit it for next week. So it, it's it's a lot of pressure in there. Yeah, and and sometimes it's hard not to, you know, not to have fun in the same. I mean, you also want to have fun in the process. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to have a video, and you want to have a photo, and so sometimes um. We're both just like, let's just not film this and let's just have fun. Let's just enjoy it. But mm -hmm. when the conditions are very good and we're sure we'll get, you know, both a good photo, then let's film it. Let's let's um, share the fun that we're having here and show um, everybody what we're doing and how we set up and everything. Yeah, I think that's that's a big thing too. Is not trying not to put pressure, but I think we yeah. all know it. It doesn't matter. It usually happens anyway. We gotta, well, I gotta get a video, and, and yeah, that's it's natural to feel that way. You know, I think we we fall into it too all the time. You know, and it's like we gotta get a video. We gotta set up. We gotta walk past the camera, and then we gotta come back and grab the camera, and then we gotta set up and do it again. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. We also gotta try and find a photo on top of that, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. It's certainly a challenge anyway, every time you go out. Oh, yeah. I, I, lo I like watching people. Uh, I, like, I like it when you go out and 
and you're doing that in your head, aren't you? Before you're doing anything, well, I do this, yeah. I do that, and then you've got like I don't know, families having a picnic and yeah. over there, and they're like, <laughs> what's what he doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on our, and, and, and they're like what the hell is that bloke doing I still have a hard time if there's a bunch of people around I still don't oh yeah I can't do it I just can't do it if there's a whole load of people around with them yeah, you see guys like, you know, Brendan Vance, and he'll walk through the airport, and he just got his camera. He just talked in, and everybody's looking at him. I, I, I can't do that. No, you know, no. I, no, I would yeah. struggle. I would struggle with that. Yeah. yeah. But when I know when I know someone's watching me say, just do the walking thing, it used to uh-huh. bother that used That used to bother me. And I'd be like, oh, no, I'll do it later when no one's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but now now I just go with it because it makes me, it makes me laugh thinking what they – you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, get, I get like yeah. a laugh out of it, so I, I just want to carry on. <laughs> get a laugh out of freaking people out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, someone walks over the top of the trail and then they see like a, just a camera sitting there and then finally you come walking back over there. And come, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get back to the car park and there's a police car. What's, park next to <laughs> What's this guy doing? Waiting to handcuff me and put me away. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. So we normally finish with a quick fire round. Um, I don't know how you want to do this because no- normally there's just one. I don't know whether you want to just jump in and. Uh, so I'll I'll start and we'll do like an alternate. So oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Right, all, all right, right well, no worries. All right. So, black and white or color? Color. Mirrorless or DSLR? DSLR. Oh, a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a lot. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Landscape or portrait? Portrait, I think. Light or composition? Light. Filters or exposure blending? Exposure blending. Photoshop or Lightroom? <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop. We're going to cause a domestic, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see that 1DX getting yeah. taken out the bag yeah. now. <laughs> the screen will just go black because the big 1DX comes across. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you Sun- guys see me, I got a black eye right here. <laughs> I've seen it, I've seen it, Mike. Don't worry, I've seen it. <laughs> the su- sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. Shoot local or the rest of the world? Depends. Hmm. On what? You have to choose one or the other. If, obviously, if no restrictions. Yeah, rest of the world. Rest of the world. Um, I kind of already answered this, but plan or spontaneous? Uh, well, and this one's again woodland or landscape? Woodlands. Intimate or grand vista? I would grand vista, but I do instruments a lot. When I do, you actually do them, I like them a lot, but I think more often, grand vista. Grand vista. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real blast. Uh, Chanty pleasure for um, having us and uh yeah so where can where can everyone find you i take it you're obviously you're on youtube and facebook and the usual yeah, places well, um, yeah our youtube channel is perea photography and um my instagram is chris underscore underscore perea and mike or uh, mine is mike perea photography on instagram and then uh Website is MikePereaPhotography.com. That's My great. ChrisPereaFineArts.com. We'll make sure uh, we stick all the links down in the show notes and on the uh, on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we'll thanks do. so much for coming on. It's been a it's been interesting. It's been a real laugh. It's been nice to yeah. have yes. a laugh. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks.